R, matey. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm getting into personality a little bit here, hanging out on the Black Pearl. Welcome to today's episode. How's it going? I am doing great. Thank you so much for asking. Today we got some big plans again. I got a big technical project I want to tackle, and I think today, because my favorite thing to watch in YouTube videos whenever I'm watching Minecraft is time lapses. I absolutely love them. So today, I would like to do a time lapse of building a super smelter. And then I'm going to do a ton of landscaping. We're going to add some fields, uh, crop fields. We're going to do like wheat and a potato one, maybe some flower fields and whatnot all over this side of the island. And I think what we're going to do is like an aerial time lapse, just watching the whole area get transformed. In between episodes, I built these here spruce trees. And actually, I just left the pirate ship, but we did the underside of the pirate ship as well. So it's not just, you know, a, a chunk of ship floating on top of the water, but... Let's go get into building this super smelter. We get all the logs from here. We're going to be turning the logs into charcoal for fuel for the super smelter. So why don't we have the furnaces stick out that way into the void. And then we have like the access to the super smelter right there. And this will be our little the end industrial hub or something like that with some, some big technical contraptions. But anyway, enough of that. Enough rambling. Let's get into this. Guys, there we go. We have ourselves a massive super smelter. 128 furnaces. Super high speed smelting. Um, this is actually a design. I kind I'm gonna take partial credit for this one. Um, but only like I get like 5% credit, I think is what I get. Uh, this is like a miniaturized version of the super smelter that they have on the SciCraft server. On the SciCraft, they have like 1700 furnaces with a whole bunch of 128 furnace modules. What I've done is I've taken that, stripped off the shulker box unloader. Um, simplified it a little bit and turned it into this thing. It does use this. I, I think this is a brilliant little contraption. This is a design by Il Mango. This uh, precision clock. It allows me to put one item into the furnace at the exact moment that the previous item is finished. That way we can uh, perfectly use our fuel. Well, when it's smelting, obviously if we have uh, charcoal in here and then we smelt one item in each furnace, then we'll waste, um, you know, seven items that could have been smelted. But that's the general idea. One big problem. I've got 128 furnaces. Each one has a hopper connected to it that needs to be filled up with fuel. And I have no fuel. I have no fuel whatsoever. So I think we're going to have to run. Oop, where did I end up? We're going to have to run that monstrosity again, get a whole ton of spruce wood. We're going to feed it through here, get a bunch of uh, charcoal, and then put that back through until we fill it up with fuel. All right, we got a, a, whole a whole bunch of spruce here. All of these shulker boxes are totally filled. I've done in like a single furnace over there just to prime the system with one coal in, or one charcoal, I suppose, in each of the furnaces. And now we're gonna do a quick test run. I've got eight stacks of spruce here. I wanna turn all of these into charcoal. And that'll be, this will be one in each furnace, so four in each furnace. So it's not super efficient use of our initial fuel, but I just wanna run it real quick to do our test and make sure that everything's working the way it's supposed to be because I don't want to stick a whole chest full of stuff in there only to go, oh, yeah, yeah, nope, that's no good. Oh, that's broken, so here we go. Eight stacks in and I have a shortage of rockets, but let's fly over here. And there we go. We're loading up all the furnaces. Bam. Beauty. All 128. And that same minecart that is depositing all of this stuff for smelting should be picking it up and the moment that they're finished we should be dropping another one in and you can see there's a little bit of extra fuel in here so some of these will get two in them and the moment it's ready perfect okay shortly we should see because we've done smelting a couple we should start seeing a whole ton of charcoal 
showing up in here. Perfect! That's what we like to see. Okay, we're rolling. Four. Okay, well, we can already go ahead and put these four. That's enough for two people in each of the furnaces right there. And have four more stacks coming through here shortly. Unfortunately, I didn't design I didn't design this unloading system perfectly. I do need to do a little bit of work on that. The uh, the unload is supposed to just basically be a water. Let's climb up there. Let's let's look at it. It's supposed to be a water stream here. It's supposed to be a water stream here where the the items come up and cruise across and kind of evenly end up in these, which only happens if you're doing a ton of items. Um, it's enough to handle. The entire load of all of these furnaces, six hoppers, which all feed into that one chest. But when you only do a little bit, all the items kind of get picked up by these first couple hoppers, and it's not perfect, it's not brilliant. So I'm thinking I'm going to redo the unloading system eventually. But for now, it works. Oh, there's four stacks. So there's all eight stacks. It worked perfectly. So let's do a bigger test. Let's send through all of these and turn them all into charcoal. Well, I smelted all of those boxes of spruce, and the system is nowhere near filled with fuel yet. <laughs> this is supposed to be a, a low fuel indicator. Uh, it tells you when it's low. Technically, right now, it thinks that it's not low because this hasn't been put into the system. But we have 128 furnaces, each with a hopper that needs to get filled up with fuel before we would have any leftover in here. Which means, I did the math, 30 shulker boxes of charcoal. 30 shulker boxes, 768 stacks of charcoal before this system is completely filled out there. So I think I might rewire where this is, uh, where the low fuel signal is coming from. I might hook it up to one of the hoppers and be like, if the hopper is less than 48 items in it or something like that, then this shows up. But point is, we're nowhere near filled with fuel. I think I'm going to spend a little bit of time here running this to get tons and tons of uh, spruce wood and then running this to turn it back into charcoal and then back and forth and back and forth until this system is close to being filled. 30 shulker boxes is an outrageous amount. For no other reason than wanting to smelt a whole ton of something now that I have a mega super smelter, I went and collected these 12 shulker boxes of sand because I'm going to make a whole bunch of glass. For what project, you ask? No project, I just want to smelt stuff. So we're going to do five, or er, not five, 12 shulker boxes filled with sand. I spent way too many hours last night sitting up smelting more logs, putting the fuel in the system, smelting the logs, putting the fuel system in. I have put about 30 shulker boxes worth of logs turned into charcoal into the system for fuel. I did the math. I have enough fuel to smelt 400,000 items, 400,000 items before I run out of fuel. So I think I'm good for a while, but let's go ahead and toss a whole bunch of sand in here. And there we have it. 12 pointlessly smelted up shulker boxes full of glass, just so I have glass anytime I decide to use it. I will never run out. Well, that's not true. I could probably use this all up in one project. But anyway, let's move on to something else. Let's go maybe landscape my entire island. Yeah, I think so. And let's do that in the form of a third person time lapse. <laughs>
guys, that was an absolute ton of work. That time lapse you just watched was a couple days worth of building, but I think as we walk through here down some of the pathways, looking at some of the custom trees that we've got, the awesome croplands that we've made, and I spent a lot of time in between cuts there placing down lighting so that we don't see torch spam anywhere, but let's just do a quick walk through here. There's where all my, this is my workstation for now. I think that this has turned out beautiful. I'm going to do another tree there eventually. We got a little pumpkin melon patch. All of the pathways have been textured and I've mixed in in some of the lower areas or areas where I think that in theory water would collect this podzol to make it look a little bit muddier. We got some tiny spruce trees, some larger ones, and I think that this has just turned out fantastic. Let's take one quick aerial view of all of this. Oh, that's awesome. And something over here I've done on the beaches, I've grabbed a bunch of mixture. These these are not all sand blocks, but I think that it makes it look like you know, wet sand on the edge of the beach and then it gets a little drier as we go. And these these uh, mushroom stem blocks, I think they look kind of like the little sand ridges you get on the beaches as the wind blows. I thought it was a really cool touch. It's a little different color. And then I've mixed in some of this bamboo and you can probably just barely see it up there. Some string on top of it to limit the height of it so we don't have, you know, 15 tall bamboo stalks everywhere. But I think that all of this has just brought the atmosphere and the completeness of this side of the island as we fly in here. I think it just looks awesome. I hope you guys do too. Unfortunately, guys, that is all the time I have for this week's episode. I really hope you enjoyed this. I thoroughly enjoyed doing all of the building. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe. Thank you so much for coming along for the ride. See ya!